Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So, Fauci had Paxlovid rebound. Mr. President had Paxlovid rebound, and so does the First Lady. A recent study just published in the New England Journal of Medicine said Paxlovid had no benefit in young adults. So, would rebound lead to viral resistance? Are rebound contagious? Let's find out. Let's first have a quick recap on what Paxlov is. It is an oral antiviral drug developed by Pfizer and granted EUA to treat COVID-19 in people at high risk for severe illness, including those over the age of 65 and anyone with a serious medical condition, regardless of immune status against the coronavirus. In its initial clinical trials, Paxlovid reduced the risk of hospitalization by 89% for high-risk unvaccinated patients. So what's up with the rebound? A team of physician scientists at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts look at the frequency of rebound without Paxlovid treatment. The result is now in preprint. They reported that more than one quarter of participants infected with the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus had rebound symptoms, while one in eight had the virus return to high levels after initial improvement. Now, older adults appear to be more susceptible to rebound, which is not surprising because immune function tends to decline with age. But only 1-2% to of the studied patients had both symptoms and viral rebound, so this suggested symptom rebound is most likely due to the lingering immune response instead of the rebound high viral level. So is rebounding virus highly contagious? Hold that thought here. We will slowly unfold the answer to this question with a few more studies. Now let's look at rebound in Paxlovid-treated patients. A second preprint suggested Paxlovid rebound is different from the rebound without treatment. This study was led by a team of physicians and vaccine scientists based in a hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. The study closely followed 11 people who took Paxlovid and 25 who did not. More than one quarter of the people who took Paxlovid rebounded, compared to just one of the 25 untreated people who had rebound. More alarming is that Paxlovid recipients rebound and had high levels of virus for several days as if they had new acute infections. The one rebound case who did not take Paxlovid had a much lower rebound viral level. In the two studies we just looked at, the Paxlovid rebound in alpha, delta, and earlier versions of Omicron variant infections. So what about BA5? A team from the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine in Cleveland, Ohio, compared the differences in Paxlovid rebound between BA5 and BA.2.12.1 this is a retrospective study using electronic health records. They reported that Paxlovid treated BA5 patients had about a 30% higher chance for symptoms and viral rebound than BA.2.12.1 patients treated with Paxlovid. Although this study has limitations such as representation and other unmeasured co-finders, the result is not surprising because BA5 can better evade antibody immune response, so leaving a higher viral load for the drug to take care of. Now it is likely that the current 5-day dosing of Paxlovid may not be enough to decrease BA5 viral load. Now let's look at potential resistance and rebound. I'm sure a lot of people are asking these questions. Why rebound? Was it because of drug resistance? Or the other way around, would rebound increase selective pressure on the virus and favor mutations that help it survive in the presence of the drug? So far, we have no clinical evidence showing the known mutations are leading to rebound. A case report preprint described Paxlovid rebound in 10 patients between 31 to 71 years old with normal immune function. 
They showed that the viral load during relapse was similar to levels during initial infection. Now, this finding does concur with other study findings. Three patient samples were genetically sequenced, and they did not see Paxlovid-induced mutation in these rebound cases. But note that this was only three samples of many rebound cases. Although we have not seen clinical evidence of Paxlovid treatment-induced mutation, in vitro studies are telling a different story. Two preprints posted on BioRex on June seventh, for example, show that SARS-CoV-2 grown in the lab quickly gains the ability to avoid Paxlovid's attack. The two research groups independently treated the coronavirus with low levels of Paxlovid, killing some but not all of the viruses. These tests simulate what might happen in an infected person who doesn't take the whole drug regimen, or an immunocompromised patient who has trouble clearing the virus. One of those studies, led by a virologist in Belgium, find that after 12 rounds of Paxlovid treatment, the coronavirus accumulated three mutations at position 50. 166 and 167 in a string of amino acids that make up the protease protein that reduced the virus susceptibility to Paxlovid by 20-fold. The other study, led by a virologist at the University of Copenhagen, also saw mutation at positions 50 and 166. When those mutations occurred together, the virus was 80 times less susceptible to Paxlovid. Now, coming back to the title of the video, the looming problem is that researchers from the University of California, Riverside, have already identified mutations to amino acids 166 and 167, two of the resistance mutation. Flagged by the Belgium researchers in virus that are circulating in people. Now, even though those mutations happened before Paxlovid was authorized, that could still be the reason for the rebound we are seeing. Coming back to the question: Is rebounding virus highly contagious? The same study that described the relapse of COVID symptoms in ten patients also saw a case. Where a 67-year-old had taken a five-day course of Paxlovid and was feeling better, he didn't have any symptoms when he saw his baby grandson, but about eight hours later, he started to feel ill again. Now the baby tested positive about three days later and had symptoms. So did the parents. Now neither the baby nor its parent had any other close contacts before they got sick. It indicates that a rebound patient can transmit the virus even before symptom reoccurs, and even though this is rare, in my opinion, it is highly contagious. I want to wrap up this video with a few cautionary notes. My intention is not to scare people, but to point out that patients and the medical community need to pay special attention to using Paxlovid. Number one, being younger patients should not use Paxlovid. Even though the Israel study is retrospective, it does confirm that Paxlovid has limited benefit in younger adult patients, and that is why Pfizer has pulled a plug in pushing this med in this patient group. Second, the medical community now thinks the five-day regimen is probably not providing enough drug to inhibit all the viral replication activity. Now we don't know the exact reason, but it could be drug interaction or genetic factors that affect the absorption and metabolism of Paxlovid. Now the FDA wants Pfizer to study more on the drug with a longer dosing regimen. But before we can get an answer, the best thing the public can do is reserve the drug for those who really need it, and those who can get the most benefit. I know almost every study I put for this video is a preprint, and those have not been peer reviewed yet. But most of them were led by reputable academic researchers, and they do have some referencing value. The bottom line is that there's still a lot to learn about Paxlovid. Just like many other emergency-authorized medications, that is all for this week. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next week. And also 
Thank you for all of the comments you guys left last week and suggesting the topics that you would like to hear in my upcoming podcast. I'm in the final planning stage now and it should be ready in a week or two or so. So stay tuned. And meanwhile, please stay safe, stay healthy and take care. Bye.